and kill the three archers. Oh my god. I wish they made it harder to do the kick. I kicked so many times accidentally. Uh, now, right here, we can actually get the penetrator sword. If you look right outside, right over there. And what you would have to do to get it is vault over this platform and then grab it. But we're already all the way up here. <clears throat> so, honestly, what I would do is just avoid it for now. Um, once we finish working our way down, we'll be able to open the shortcut. But just to, just to show, just jump down and get it. Um, it's honestly kind of, it's kind of odd that we can even get this, uh, because later on in the game, in fact, the very next zone, we'll grab the eye while we're right here, uh, in the, the very next area in 5-1, an enemy that we kill there will drop the penetrating sword. So, more than anything, I'm covering it just because we're, we're aiming to get all the loot, uh, but, you know, you don't, you don't have to grab that there, and you'll get the exact same item. A little bit later but to be fair we usually save one five uh as and have it be one of the final zones that we tackle so you want the penetrating sword now i mean it, it looks cool it's a cool sword uh scaling isn't particularly good nothing really noteworthy about it it's just it's a boss it's a weapon the next boss uses and it looks cool Red Knight, we did that. Uh, we're going to continue around for grass and two baddies. So there's uh, some stuff over that way. Ignore that stuff for now. Grab this grass. As you can see, like two archers there. We're going to go there, but we're going to do that a little bit later. First, we want to get. Go this way instead. Oh my goodness. I'm not going to use that, but it's okay. As being very, very resilient. Send the storage. Rescuing me. Need to get that loot that's on that body. Oh, 
Saving him, he just basically did and ignores us. Uh, so get this off the corpse. That's the official's cap, and we need that for an area that's coming up in just a little bit. And we pretty much finished up Strava's chain. It should be good now. We'll hang out over here. This is the pure clear stone. So for those of you using quality weapons, you're all set. Um, and now that we've killed the enemies here, we don't really need to worry about him. There's more enemies ahead. Uh, but he's not going to meander that way, so. Now we got to head back on down, and there's a couple things that we need to do before we make our way up to the boss. Which I may, may split this into two episodes. I don't know. Might just make it one long one, so we, I was going to knock out the uh, tend Well, I'll probably save the tendency stuff for another episode. I'll run all the way back here past the Tower Knight. You remember how there's a, a door that I said was locked quite a few episodes back. We can finally get that door open now. Uh, this is using the rusted iron key. Might as well kill this guy real fast just to get his, uh, oh my god. Get that grass. So we can now use this. And then we head on down here. And there's going to be a fat official, a crystal lizard, a uh, tower shield. I don't know. Before we make our way, we need to worry about him. There's hang out over here. Uh, so get this off the corpse. That's the official's cap. And we need that for an area that's coming up in just a little bit. And we pretty much finished up Strava's chain. It should be good now. We'll hang out over here. This is the pure clear stone. So for those of you using quality weapons, you're all set. Um, and now that we've killed the enemies here, we don't really need to worry about him. There's more enemies ahead, uh, but he's not going to meander that way, so... Now we gotta head back on down, and there's a couple things that we need to do before we make our way up to the boss. Which I may, may split this into two episodes, I don't know. Might just make it one long one, so we, I was gonna knock out the, uh, ten, well, I'll probably save the tendency stuff for another episode. I'll run all the way back here past the Tower Knight. You remember how there's a, a door that I said was locked Quite a few episodes back, we can finally get that door open now. Uh, this is using the rusted iron key. Might as well kill this guy real fast just to get his, uh, oh my god. Get that grass. So we can now use this, his, uh,
official of Crystal Wizard, uh, Tower Shield, two heroes, so let's head the other. Father.
You killed that blooded sluggard for me. I'm called Bjorn. The other deserve a hand on the head. And discuss this. So, um, this is the secret door. Um, to be completely honest with you, I don't know how to open it yet. Uh, no one knows how to open it yet. Uh, this is a puzzle that Blue Point has put into the game. Uh, currently, a lot of speedrunners and, and other folks in the community are all trying to figure it out. Uh, right now, the, the leading theory is that it involves a special coin that drops on pure white and pure black. Uh, that you can find in the world on fractured mode. So a couple people are trying to figure it out. No one knows what's behind the door, but you can use uh, photo mode, and uh, people have been able to, to... I'm not good at manipulating photo mode, but you can get behind the door and see that there is a piece of loot there. So if you're curious, just Google Demon Store's door, and you'll find tons of stuff about it. Um, this was not in the original, and no one's been able to figure it out yet since the game came out, so it's very much like the, the hot topic puzzle of the community that Blue Point put in the game. Uh, but anyway, ignoring the, the door that no one can get open for now, continue down the other path. This. Now we run all the way back, and it's time to tackle the next part of this area, which will lead up to the boss. So if you've played other Souls games before this, uh, this is going to look very familiar, uh, you know, very much like the, uh, the path leading up to Lothric, very much like the uh, Dark Souls 1 making your, your final way all the way up. Basically, it's just a gauntlet of enemies and enemies and enemies. 
Um, so the first thing I want to do is talk about how to avoid these enemies in case you die, because this is one of those things where it's like, if you die, you don't want to have to refight all of this stuff to get back here. Uh, it can it can be quite a pain, in fact. So, in fact, we'll probably save the tendency of stuff for a later episode. Uh, but so we're going to take this path up. There was some loot we didn't grab before. You can already start to see a couple of the baddies. Run along this way. Honestly, the approach is harder than the boss. Right over here, you can grab this. And now, what you want to do is just snipe as many of these. So it'll pop off to fight melee. See, and he'll get out. Snipe all three knights, though. Stuff to fight Pat. <laughs> Run back to the stair. I don't need to worry about that. Well, I'm going. His name. His name. Well, I'm going. We're going smash. I don't care for his name. Souls are prop. Died as get out. Dropped up. Or Massive. Every single one of these. Once they wrap all this stuff. I mean, that we would typically snipe. Or they're not even going to make it back. That we would typically snipe. Yeah, now I just why not? Let's just focus him. So all you why not? Let's just kill the penetrator now. I want to try and uh, try my my guy here. See how it feels. Uh, so because we freed him from the cage, Yor is gonna come help, and the penetrator is just gonna focus him. So all you'll have to do. It's just stay behind him. He's very good at the line. He has a corner for Bjorn. Uh, watch out for that staff move, obviously. That's probably one of the three things you need to look out for. If he stabs Bjorn with it, you can actually attack him during that. I think I'm just going to go to this. Wait, how much to it? You just wait. Yeah, that's him. One more. Anyway, so tendency stuff. Uh, uh, three, two, and three, three. So stay tuned. What is that? Most important. At that point, you can stop. What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. It's time to head over to three, two, upper Latria. Now, after that last fight, a uh, couple things that we can now do. Most importantly, we have now rescued Yuria. Now, Yuria is all the way back here in the corner. Uh, you're going to have to talk to her twice, but she'll ask you if you're okay with learning witchcraft. And at that point, you can start learning some crazy strong spells, one of which is Firestorm, a massive AoE that will basically instagib most bosses. Uh, it is very, very powerful. You saw the Demon Souls Let's Play I did. Uh, on the original that we did last year, Firestorm is what I used to basically one-shot most bosses. So super, super strong spell. Um, alternatively, if you still have that particular soul, we can pick up Wrath of God from a merchant we'll get a little bit later. Uh, but namely, the biggest thing I want to point out is we can get Cursed Weapon from her. Now, Cursed Weapon comes from the Penetrator soul. Alternatively, you could go over to Sage Freak and get Light Weapon, which is a... Uh, basically a magic scaling based enchant but what's so good about cursed weapon is cursed weapon will give us a 50 percent attack rating boost on our weapon it's just a flat out 50 percent so with something like this which is at 245 you know let's just say it's 250 just to round up we get an extra 125 from cursed weapon so needless to say very very potent for melee oriented builds uh, but so make sure you pick up that just from the souls, uh, from going through that level and killing Penetrator. You should have close to enough to get your intelligence to 18. So this is where we're at now. Our intelligence is going to stay at 18. Our faith is staying at 16. Our dex is staying at 16. Those three stats are completely done. Uh, magic's done. Luck doesn't get touched. Strength is fine at 30. So from here on out, we're basically going to get vitality up to 30. And then just focus on pumping up endurance so that we can start wearing some thicker armor. Uh, but let's head on over Upper Latria. This area isn't too bad, actually. Uh, compared to the first part of Latria, uh, I find the, the upper version actually be a lot easier. So, 
Just head on in. Now, right at the start here, there is a renowned hero soul right down there. Just ignore that for now. Eventually, we're going to pop. I'm keeping a close watch. Huh. You have a heart of the I can forge weapons. You come back alive.
Your souls. You come back alive.
you want. Do as you wish. There are no secrets here. Do as you wish. There are no secrets. Go on ahead. on top and drop down so we'll just grab it then and just save ourselves some time and there's going to be a couple hello again i am sorry but should you only why not try the magic are you certain it would are you sure
Drawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. Art, may thy strength. They take a little bit of time to catch up, so just ignore the first one for now. Go on up here, and one will land, and we'll kill that one instead. And then the other gargoyle should catch up to us. There we go. See, now he's coming. Oh, no, nope, he's flying away. Well, oh well. We don't need to kill him, necessarily. Um, so at this split... Ignore going to the right. We're actually going to drop down there for a little bit of treasure in a little bit. So for now, instead, just head on up. Now, this next part is particularly tricky, in my opinion. I uh, had... It, uh, the, all, in all the times I've done this, I've been able to get it consistently only a couple times. But basically, you can see a ledge and there's loot. So what I would suggest doing is right kind of here where you can see, I mean, you can obviously see the message, uh, but you can see how it's kind of black and it's quickly. I saw that coming. A little bit.
Hello again. I'm keeping a close watch. Better than having you both. I see. Right. Don't let me buy him. Ah, human. Get early. We're actually going to drop down there for a little bit of tread. No, he's flying away. The other gargoyles should get gargoyles here. <laughs> there is a renowned hero soul right down. So, just head on in. Now, right at the start here, there is a renowned hero soul right down there. Just ignore that for now. Eventually, we're going to pop out on top and drop down. So, we'll just grab it then. Just save ourselves some time. And there's going to be a couple gargoyles here. Now, they take a little bit of time to catch up, so just ignore the first one for now. Go on up here and want to land, and we'll kill that one instead. And then the other gargoyle should catch up to us. There we go. See, now he's coming. Oh, no, he's flying away. Well, oh well. We don't need to kill him necessarily. Um, so at this split... Ignore going to the right. We're actually going to drop down there for a little bit of treasure in a little bit. So for now, instead, just head on up.
Now, this next part is particularly tricky, in my opinion. I uh, had it, uh, the, all, and all the times I've done this, I've been able to get it consistently only a couple times. But basically, you can see a ledge and there's loot. So what I would suggest doing is right kind of here where you can see, I mean, you can obviously see the message. Uh, but you can see how it's kind of black and squiggly. Instead, just walk straight. It's right kind of here where you can see. What's vibrating? See how it's kind of black and quickly. Instead, just walk straight. Don't roll, don't do anything else, just walk. And that should get you down. Pick up the rune shield and sword. This is both actually pretty cool. Um, going over this way. Nothing over here. Just a message, though. Kind of a, a cool, spooky location that you can get some good screenshots with. Uh, but we're going to drop down, and this is actually uh, the opposite side. So when we came up and I said, no, no, go right, go left, this is what we would have come to if we had gone to the right, which is why I wanted to hold off, because it just made more sense to to get it. So we'll get the Moonlight Stone Shard. We'll roll through the... Grab this. Uh, there's more stuff down that way, but we need to actually go down there later. So just ignore that for now. We'll grab this guy as well while we're here. And back up top we go. It leads to the boss, but you can't right now. You can see there's a big thing in the way, so just ignore that. Instead, go over this way. Uh, so there's going to be two gargoyles that we have to fight. Right, that's one. We got another one up ahead. It was not very accurate. Right over here, we can get the flamberge, which I really, I really, really, really want to do a build around this thing because it has uh, built-in bleed damage. And a pretty killer move set, so I feel like doing that and maybe putting uh, sure. put like poison on it, like poison bleed flamberge might be kind of cool. And a pretty killer right over here, we can get the flamberge. I really, I really, really, really want to do a build around this thing because it has uh, built in bleed damage and a pretty killer move set, so I feel like doing that and maybe putting uh, put like poison on it, like poison bleed flamberge might be kind of cool. Right, and then up ahead we got two more gargoyles we gotta kill. You can already see one flying up in the air. It'll drop down, and this one will take a minute to catch up, so just wait for this guy. Should be one gargoyle that we encounter 
Uh, fighting the gargoyles on the stairs is kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. So I would suggest just walking past him unless he, like, comes right in front of you. Um, and we'll take care of them in a little bit. So right here is the elevator. Just wait for the elevator. The gargoyle comes. You can kill him. But we're actually going to be crossing the elevator here when it comes down. We'll get some loot on the other side over there by that sign. Cross. I did, I did say he wasn't the brightest. Anyway. Oh, and we just missed the elevator. Oh, man. Well, anyway, we're going to be taking this elevator up. Uh, there's going to be a gargoyle likely waiting for us right at the top of the elevator. But to be honest, the gargoyle AI isn't exactly the brightest, as you've seen so far. Sometimes they'll just kind of derp around in the air. Uh, sometimes they'll they'll just be sitting there. But, but this one is waiting for us. Just to go. Instead, we're going to proceed up this way. And then we just want to kill all of these guys. After killing them, we're going to get a cutscene here. Uh, basically, we destroyed the, the magic, the chain's going to fall, and that's one of the chains for the heart. Uh, now, up here, I want to point this out. <clears throat> so, remember where we're at, this is the first tower. We can't currently do this, but on pure white world tendency, we're going to come back here, and this is where we're... Well, that's what the vibration was from, Dan. to free ride Dell, the guy that was uh, trapped in the cell and screaming back in the We'll be covering that in the next episode as well, but I still want to point it out for those that are just tuning in to one episode for whatever reason. Right, now, you can take these cages down. Instead, we're going to go over this way and hang out with our good buddy. Fuck. Now, this is your... Good bud, we're gonna go over this way and hang out with our Wait, oh that was the first. Thank you. 
pack it first. Good buddy. Now this is Yurt. Um, Yurt has some pretty badass armor. Go ahead and let him out of the cell. Um, he says he's on your side, but Yurt's actually uh, a dirty murderer. Uh, Yurt wants to kill everybody. So we, we're, we don't want to be on your side. But at the same time, we don't actually want to just beat Yurt up because killing him before he aggros could actually uh, pull down our character tendency. So basically what happens to explain your a little bit better is when you free your, he is going to uh, go to the Nexus and he's going to start murdering people. <laughs> if you don't come and kill him, he just keeps murdering people. Uh, and as it progresses, eventually he wipes out some, some pretty important people. He kills off Uria. Uh, he kills St. Urbane, the miracle guy. He kills Sage Freak. So instead, by just gravitying his ass off the cliff, not only are we unimpacted from a tendency perspective, but by restarting the game, we're able to come here and pick up the dope armor that he drops. Now, he'll drop that regardless of how you kill him, but by doing the gravity method, it's not going to affect your character tendency, which we want pure white character tendency to get a hold of one of the rings or the all ring achievement. Anyway, climb in the elevator, ride it on down. Pick up the arc stone while I was up there. I don't know if I did. I'll look at my inventory. Probably yes. Yeah, I got three. And I think we started with two. If I didn't pick it up, there's an arc stone up on that platform. <clears throat> All right. So now that we are down in the swamp, uh, exiting the cage, we're gonna go around this way first. Yes. Yeah, I got three. And I think we started. Now look at where we're at right here, this little area, we're going to call this the rocky area. That is eventually where we're going to come back, but there's some stuff that we want to do here first. So just follow this path along and ignore this little guy or kill him, it doesn't matter. these centipede men now this platform is actually important uh while right now it's just that you know you're regular rather than a normal platform and this is actually where we find the uh the demon that we want to kill to get upgrade materials for our dragon bone smasher or whatever uh, weapon needs them that you're using so just keep that in mind remember where this place is at <clears throat> just take your cage down just take a quick loop drop down into the swamp and now down in the swamp let's see
left for plague resistance. We have another way for loot. Okay, so we got to get the other stuff. We'll get that in a bit, though. <clears throat> and we have a prison horde. Now, I suggest staying right by this pillar here. We're going to be able to snipe this guy from this pillar, but he won't be able to shoot us. So we have mercury stone charms. And this is another spot I'm going to point out. When we come back for pure black tendency, uh, right here, we'll be able to find a nice little ring. If you look up, you can kind of see it up top there. Get a better angle here. There you go. You can kind of see the shiny sitting up there. Uh, that's going to come down on pure black tendency, and it'll let us move through swampy areas uh, without our motion being impeded, which right now isn't a concern, but later on it will be. So after grabbing that, go back this way. And these are the other two cages. So if we had come down the, um, from the initial set of cages, this is where we would have been dropped off. Kill this guy. All guide of guidance. Uh, stone to the right, stones to the left. It's the stone. You fucking serious? Should be right over here. Kill this guy. After grabbing that, go back this way. And these are the other two cages. So if we had come down the... Um, the cages, cages, cages. No!
cage. This is where we would have been dropped off. Still this guy. That's the all guide of guidance. Uh, stone to the right, souls to the left the stone and souls should be right over here all right um doo -doo, doo -doo. Hmm. the thing i don't get is oh, i did not see the plague resistance ring so let me go back to my uh loop left I already had the plague resistance ring so we're gonna go up this way rocks So run a little ways. There's going to be a uh, black phantom mind flayer. So just like the Tenacity men that we fought up till now, except he's glowing and red and he's going to hurt a lot more. And he should be up the stairs that we'll reach in just a second. So just kind of be cautious as you're going up here. We're because we're able to just do this and he can't. This next spot to do is try to snipe this crystal lizard from back here but we had to remove the heart to get that one this oh a chunk very nice um let's see snipe lizard another centipede waiting to ambush you and some spice so ahead we have an ambush gargoyle to the right oh he just barely how like they they the ambush cargo to elevate her up. It's better to to Latria. down the cargo. Fight me or the other one. Done. I'm hard to get some good to get access. Oh dang! So. So, back on grass, and we'll go through here. Uh, so, run a little ways. There's going to be a uh, black phantom mind player. So, just like the Tenacity men that we fought up till now, except he's glowing and red, and he's going to hurt a lot more. And he should be up the stairs that we'll reach in just a second. So. Just kind of be cautious as you're going up here. We're going to snipe him as opposed to getting close. You can already see the light. And we can use this. Uh, the great thing about the lava boat with the hit stun. Because we're able to just do this and he can't even move. It makes things a hell of a lot safer. Next spot, finish you up. Uh, we can see another one of those guys, and there's a crystal lizard, but there's an ambush guy right behind here. So, what we want to do is try to snipe this crystal lizard from back here. 
apparently I'm gliding between the crystals on this thing. There we go. Crystal Lizard's dead. Now we'll kill this one. And now I can just walk around with our shield up. Waiting for Mr. Ambush. I want to pick that up. Now you'll notice that there's a shiny right here. And here. Actually, can we get this one? No, we can't. We can't slip between. For some reason, I thought we had to remove the heart to get that one. This. Ooh, a chunk. Very nice. Um, let's see. Snipe lizard. Another centipede waiting to ambush you and some spice. So ahead, we have an ambush gargoyle to the right. So he wants to hang out. We'll just make his life easy for him. Oh no, the loot. Um, you're real? Oh, he just barely dodged it. Right, stop flying. Oh yeah, these gargoyles, man. They just, they take forever to land. And there's another one up top. I'll go ahead and pop him off too. Also, really easy to see them compared to the original. I love how, like, vivid they are. See ambush gargoyle, two more ahead. We're gonna go around to the left for a soul item. And then we'll take the elevator up. Um, after the elevator, we're just gonna run up and kill the dregs and then we'll finish off the gargoyles. Yep, just another day waiting in the tower. I think we used to have a push button to make it come faster. This is just like the other tower, so just run on up to the top, kill the dregs, and then we'll worry about the, uh, the gargoyles that are here. My parents are atheists, blah, blah, blah. Scots hate God because the English like God. So they do everything. Like Canadians and Americans, they do most things out of spite. So they want to do whatever the big guy downstairs is not doing. And British people like Christmas. So Scottish people like Hogmanay. They like New Year's Eve. And um, they feel the same way about Christianity. So I'm new to this thing. But the inevitability of the universe and the fact that my daughter's heel works made me realize after my children were born that there is a God. Now, as far as the minor details go, sure, there's some overlap there. I don't think Buddhists are going to hell if they got it wrong. Um, but I'm a newbie here, and at church, I'm just sort of looking at everyone else and trying to get this thing right. You end it on your right shoulder, and then there's the, the water thing. I notice I'm just sort of following along like something out of Coneheads trying to blend in, and I love it. And it's really interesting, too, as, as a newcomer to Christianity, how misinformed I was about what goes on there. I heard that you sit there and you talk about how your pets are going to heaven and there's no such thing as dinosaurs and the earth is 3,000 years old and all gays are evil and they're going to hell. And you get to meet your friends. And then people take this trivialized straw man version of it and they go, I don't believe in that dumb thing about the guy in this guy with Santa Claus. I actually used to call him Santa Claus facetiously. Uh, that doesn't come up. What comes up is interesting philosophy and stories that go back thousands of years. I mean, the, the Bible was amassed with tales that went way back, patterns they had noticed. And I really see those patterns as describing evolution. And, uh, you know, things like don't kill. We tried killing. It doesn't work out. So that's going to be in there. Anyway, all these great lessons that humans have figured out over time. But uh, here's my 10 favorite things about sitting in that room for an hour every Sunday and recalibrating yourself. And number one is there's this part where they go, now this is a Catholic church, but I'm sure you're the same. They go, peace be with you. 
and I get a little, become a bit of a fag uh, during this, and will occasionally almost cry, because they, you have to turn around to someone next to you and go, peace be with you, and you shake their hand, or you just, you shake some old lady's hand, some withered old hand, some little kid, peace be with you, and you're sitting in a room of strangers, and then everyone turns around and says that, and it's, it's a stark reminder that we're all just really just trying to get along, we're trying to get through the day, and, and this, this leads and leads media mentality where everyone is evil and everyone's out to get you and you have to be dubious of the democrats and the republicans are racist and all this stuff you forget that everyone is basically like you and we really just want everyone to be doing okay even the worst bureaucrat on earth is a good person at heart he's just got it wrong in fact you could argue that bureaucrats and the government are people who have strayed from god because what are you doing when you're enforcing tax laws and saying, I'm going to take your money and put it over here? You're playing God. So, in a way, the government is blasphemy. Uh, number two, it's a lot like sex. In that, after you're done, you feel more connected to humanity. You know when you bone your wife, uh, it feels nice and everything. But then you're walking down the street the next day and you're sort of like, we're part of the cosmos. We're breeding. It's been a quarter of a million years we've been doing this as homo sapiens. I'm one. The singularity is near. We are as one. You feel that with church. You feel like you're part of your community. And it's a hard uh, feeling to articulate, but it really is sort of a symbiosis with your fellow man. That's refreshing. Number three, it's nice. In a world, especially my world, which is neck tattoos and fart jokes and constant double entendres, sexual entendres and, and irony and, and, and sarcasm constantly dripping with, with cruelty. I mean, my life is mostly humor. And as John Cleese said, every humor deep down is somewhat mean spirited. It's nice just to go to a room once a week and have no irony. There's, there's no gross things. There's no fart jokes. There's no anal. <laughs> it's just a place where we focus on the good. And the fact that, that that has to be narrowed down to an hour a week is sad, but it's also a good bare minimum. It's sort of like birthdays. People go, why do I got to buy you a birthday present just because you were born? No, it's just a way to get a bare minimum number of presents out there. You should be buying stuff at Christmas. I know Santa brings most of the presents, kids, but you should buy some. And the fact that we have these traditions are just sort of a bare minimum. Your life should be nice, but if it's not, let's try to at least have an hour a week that's nice. Number four, it's beautiful. I mean, it's so beautiful in a church that I'm almost dubious of the craftsman. You start to think about divine intervention. <laughs> I'm serious. Look at the way these things are carved. I could just see the craftsman. It's almost like God just sort of went, and imbued him with extra skills. He was probably carving these these stone tablets or whatever. I don't even know what the half the thing is made of. Masonry? What is all that stuff? I, I feel like he probably felt like he was on Adderall. And he just went, Jesus Christ, I'm really... No, he wouldn't take the Lord's name in vain. He went, holy cow. I'm re... Oh, no, holy's bad, dude. He'd go, fucking shit. Uh, I'm really carving this well. I've never carved this well. I'm really nailing this stained glass thing I'm working on. It's almost like someone is helping me. It's almost like there's a force in there, a force of nature that's been carrying us on since the Earth began 3.5 billion years ago. Yes, you're allowed to say that at church. Catholicism and science are actually friends. Didn't know that until I got there. Number five, it makes you philosophical. And this goes back to the nice thing. It's like smoking your joint in the bath or doing heroin, but without the heroin. And you sit there and you start thinking about stuff. And I, my brain will go to places it never went before. And that's really refreshing and, and healthy. Like I had this doozy the other day in church. What if we're in heaven? You're allowed to think such thoughts. You see, every time people say, oh, uh, heaven, yeah, yeah, you wear a white dress and you have wings and you play a harp. And I go, no, that's our really primitive interpretation of this crazy thing that we can't even articulate. It's unfathomable what it is. Imagine us as just sort of floating gases up there. It is so different from Earth that I can't describe it or even imagine it. It's just like the universe it's, it is infinite. I can't imagine infinity. It's over my head, literally. And then I thought, wait a minute. If there's one thing that's unfathomable, it's if you were a sperm and you were unborn, 
and then you became born and you're a dude talking to a TV monitor with a striped tie on, right? That's very different. So maybe the sperm us, the non-born us, was us. Then we died when we were born. And then we went to heaven, which is earth. This is the kind of stuff that goes through your mind in church. And you go, that's interesting, me. What else you got? <laughs> um, number six. It makes you appreciate your life. Now, all religions are like this. I've been to a lot of Indian ceremonies because my wife's in it and kind of stuff. And, uh... By the way, a little side note here. My wife is the one who got me into religion in a way. Because I was, we were moving into an apartment when we were dating. And she was, she had some, I don't know, rosemary thyme, some shit she was burning. I still don't know what it was. And I realized, I don't know her religion. I know she goes to powwows and she's in a teepee for three days when someone dies. I don't know if she's Native American church, if she's... And I, it's not my business, uh, so I don't ask. Indians are very private about their religion. And I thought, yeah, why is our shit on the chopping block? Like, why do we have to talk about... Oh, I believe this is going to happen to gays, and this is going to happen to Buddhists, and I believe Jesus was born at this time, and not at Christmas, and blah, blah, blah. We're always being interrogated, whereas everyone else, you know, when women are menstruating, they're not allowed in a teepee. No one calls that sexist, but Christians have to bake a cake for everyone. It seems like Christianity is under undue scrutiny, as are white males for some reason, maybe because we tolerate that kind of questioning. But anyway, I thought, yeah, I'm going to have my own religion, Christianity, and I'm not going to tell anyone about it. I'm never going to do videos, for example, that say 10 reasons why I love church. But yeah, in Indian culture, it's a lot of like give thanks to the north, to the west, to the east, to the south. And they do that in church, too. Christian churches, thanks, gratitude. Let's take a moment of gratitude. And, you know, the serenity prayer is a big part of that. And you, you go home and you're looking at your kid and he's being super cute. and He's got some dumb magic trick where he goes, check this out, dad. OK, I can turn this into this. Watch. And he goes, you see this? It's this. Now, that's a shitty magic trick. And I know how you did it. But after church, I look at that and I think, oh, he's not going to be this naive uh, for very long. What a gift it is to be able to watch this. I'm almost tearing up talking about it right now. Whew. See that? See what it does to you? It makes you alive again. Number seven. Uh, it cures your hangover. A big part of why you're hungover is because you indulged yourself last night. That's what booze is. You're indulging. And you know four drinks, five drinks is a normal buzz. But you keep doing shots and you overdo it. And then the next day, your answer to this self-indulgence is more indulgence. You sit and you binge Netflix or you watch eight hours of shows picking your balls. Maybe you masturbate or something and pick your nose. And ugh, you're disgusting in your Budweiser PJs. When you get up and you go to church, you sort of go... All right, all right, enough indulgence. Let's sort of recalibrate here. And yes, you're still in pain, but you're back into the world. You're, you're refocused and you're out of this me, me, me thing that got you into this drunken mess in the first place. Which brings us to uh, number eight, right? Yes, number eight is Latin mass. When you go to Latin mass, you don't understand a word they're saying, and it's meditation. And then you realize, wow, the church was doing so much good. And then we got rid of it. Atheism became cool. And now what do we do? Oh, Madonna's into some thing, Jewish thing, where she puts a red thread around her wrist. Or you talk to some atheist comedian who says, yeah, I had a lot of trouble with my temper, so I'm doing meditation now. Yeah, that's Latin mass. Oh, I, I got too drunk, so I had to go to rehab. How long is it? Uh, it's 40 days. Yeah, that's Lent. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing my psychiatrist. I'm an atheist, but I have a lot of mental things. So I have to talk to this guy and confess to him my sins. And uh, he helps me atone for my sins. Yeah, that confession. So we had all these things. We abolished them, sabotaged them. We had a better idea. And here we are with this sort of makeshift version of Christianity, trying to rebuild what we just tore down. And that's what I love about Latin Mass. And you see this, too, with hunting. You're sitting there waiting for a year for three hours. It sounds really boring, sitting in a, in a oh, bush with a gun. It or a bow and arrow and it is so serene i've done both hunting and heroin and they both have the same kind of endorphins when you finally do see the deer or when you finally do that you know sorry you just reach this beautiful serenity that you realize god has already put in our dna you don't need to uh and that brings me to number nine uh is when everyone's there you're showing the community that you care that you're trying. Now, we know you're not perfect. We know you're a sinner. But when other people see you at the grocery store, what you said to your area is, I'm in it to win it here. I, I fucked up and I, I did this wrong and I did that wrong. But I'm determined to make it better. And by the way, I feel the same way about fashion. 
when I see someone wearing pajamas or Crocs, I just think we were gifted this thing, especially young people when they're at their peak of beauty and they're just wearing pants they found in the garbage, and you think, can you just participate, please? I know it's not important necessarily, but there's a Monopoly game out. Roll the dice, get involved, you know, try. It's just so, you're sitting around in pajamas watching Netflix and you think, someone handed you this miracle, but I mean, the odds of you being born are unfathomably small. And you're just like, yeah, big deal. Church is the opposite of that. Church is trying. Which brings me to number 10. My 10th favorite thing about church, which I uh, have to come up with on the spot because I seem to have only written nine. So I'm going to ask God to imbue me with number 10. <laughs> number 10 is it shows you that history was right. You're sitting in this tradition that goes back thousands of years and you realize I don't just have a kinship with my community. I have a kinship with cavemen. I have a kin kinship with all of man. This tradition exists for a reason. We're all connected. We're all one. Why are we here? We're here to breathe. So yes, I'm sure. Yes, you got it. We're part of this beautiful chain, which is so sad that people don't have kids and people are aging and they're not going to Cuba, he barked out 
Glaswegians are stupid, ugly, and violent. And a Glaswegian woman was there. And she turned around and goes, See you, fuck you, you prick! You ugly old man, you're disgusting! I'll kill you! I'll muggle you right now, I'll bat you so I'll... And that was my dad goes, Because she was ugly, he's ugly. She was ready to kill him, which is stupid. We got violent, everything's in there. They did it. And of course, we're doing the dumb Nine, we were playing Trivial Pursuit, and I suck at that. Yeah, that's 
said. Now you're not the kidding. I don't want this person on my team! He knows nothing! But he was right. Uh, number 10, this is my favorite one, because it was very astute. Like, the thing about kids who grow up poor on the streets is they really can deliver their bars in a very efficient way. They're not petty. They, get, they just take some truth and then they just turn it into a little pen knife and just jab you in the neck. He, we were upstate and uh, he said, Oh my God, Shahola, Pennsylvania. I know someone who owns a barber shop up here. I know him from Florida. They go to Florida. Um, so he goes to visit him and he was there and he said hi and then he came back to my house. Can you believe that? Is that not interesting? And they go, no, it's not interesting at all. I don't care. You know a guy who lives nearby? There's, there's no story there. And he goes, yes. Yeah, yes, you wouldn't have a reaction like that. And then he goes, your friends are in media and entertainment. And uh, those people tend to be shallow and stupid. And I sort of did a tally of my friends, and they are in media and entertainment. A lot of them are shallow and stupid. More of the story. Uh, your dad's not interesting, my dad is, but all dads are right all the time. You may think they're wrong. I think Mark Twain said his dad was dumb when he was uh, 18, when, when Mark Twain was 18 and 25, and then all of a sudden his dad became smart when Mark Twain became an adult. In other words, your dad's always right. It's only just a matter of time before you figure it out. Hey, folks, go to rebelcruise.ca. Put the thing machine there. We're going to go from Miami to a bunch of Mexican places and then back again. Like minded folks, my dad, Jimmy McKiss, is going to be there. And we'll talk about whatever you want and get hammered, eh? What is happening?
side path. Don't worry about this right now. We need to get up the middle of the path before it is down there. Picking up those three. He kind of a trap on the head right there with those balls. Come on over here. Touch this. Yeah. 
out of our merchant giant M. Uh, so we can pick up plenty of grass here from them. In fact, I'm gonna go for our over capacity. So, uh, let me take this and send those to storage. And uh, there we go. Um, other things to point out here, Night Shield is pretty nice, Crescent X is pretty nice as uh, Night Sword really nice one here.
it harder to do the kick. I kicked so many times accidentally. Uh, now, right here, we can actually get the penetrator sword. If you look right outside, right over there. And what you'd have to do to get it is vault over this platform and then grab it. But we're already all the way up here. <clears throat> so, honestly, what I would do is just avoid it for now. Um, once we finish working our way down, we'll be able to open the shortcut. Just to, just to show. Just jump down and get it. Honestly, kind of, it's not a lot that we can get this, uh, because later on in the game, in fact, the very next zone, we're at the eye wall right here. Uh, and the, the very next area in 5 1, an enemy that we kill there will drop the penetrating sword. So, more than anything, I'm covering it just because we're, we're aiming to get all the loot. Uh, but you don't, you don't have to grab that there. Ambush gargoyle, two more ahead. And as we could. Now, in this next spot, finish you off. Uh, we can 
see another one of those guys. And there's a crystal lizard, but there's an ambush guy right behind here. So what we want to do is try to snipe this crystal lizard from back here. And apparently, I'm gliding between the crystals on this thing. There we go. Crystal lizard's dead. Now we'll kill this one. And now I can just walk around with our shield up. Waiting for Mr. Ambush. Wanna pick that up. Now you'll notice that there's a shiny right here. And here. Actually, can we get this one? No, we can't. We can't slip between. For some reason I thought we had to remove the heart to get that one. This. Ooh, a chunk. Very nice. Um, let's see, snipe lizard, another centipede waiting to ambush you and some spice. So ahead we have an ambush gargoyle to the right. So he wants to hang out, we'll just make it life easy for him. Oh no, the loot. Um, you're real? Oh, he just barely dodged it. Stop flying. Oh yeah, these gargoyles, man, they just, they take forever to land. And there's another one up top. Let's go ahead and pop him off too. Also, really easy to see them compared to the original. I love how like vivid they are. All right, let's see ambush card. Going two more ahead. I'm gonna go around to the left for a soul item, and then we'll take the elevator up. Um, after the elevator, we're just gonna run up and kill the dregs, and then we'll finish off the gargoyles. Yep, just another day waiting in the tower. So we need to have a push button to make it come faster. This is just like the other tower, so just run on up to the top, kill the dregs, and then we'll worry about the, uh, the gargoyles that are here. You can certainly kill the gargoyles earlier, but... I find it's just better to, to kind of wait because then they tend to okay. even out. So now with that chain done, I actually like discuss it. Both the chains are broken and the heart of Latria is gonna fall. Phew, down the high goes.
How many of you had a chance? Um, I also uh, had your glasses like, in your school I had leadership. Um, yeah, let me know what it's bringing or whatever. And if you can bring my shirt, that would be great. Thank you.
guys usually stay on the time. You don't come out that far. Come on. All right. Uh, oh, down. Out of the sky. Let's go this way and pick up all these. A bunch of uh, mercury stone stuff. Oh, excuse me, moonlight stone. Moonlight mercury. We can find both of them here. But if you are using the enchanted falchion, the moonlight stone is. Uh, Actually, no, the Falchion is Dark Moonlight, I believe. Anyway, you can use that stuff to make magic weapons. So head on in here now. And there's a couple enemies here, but it's, it's nothing bad. Just kind of go around in a loop. Pick up the stuff. increase your soul count but regardless anytime that you're doing the reaper farm that we talked about um, put on the ring of avarice it is I mean, it's a big increase I remember it's a big increase you know what? why not let's pop a google it real fast uh 20 percent indeed if i day i'm in depraved on to the bar all right see the guy all right, so you'll notice the tendrils are now gone. Before we climb up the giant staircase, run back here and grab this little guy. Uh, now, about halfway up the staircase is going to be another mind player, so just get your bow ready. And you can let's see, there he is. So we're going to run until we're within a decent range of him, and then we're going to use these little chain pillars to block his magic and snipe him that's probably a good distance and keep in mind we got the bow and the bow is gonna hit stun him anyway just in case he gets a cast off you can see it hits those pillars and down he goes Two more goodies we can grab. One will be back this way to the left. And one will be back the opposite direction, right past the fog wall. Um, seems like a good time to discuss the boss. So the man eaters are weak to fire. Um, it is a two boss fight. So the idea is you start fighting one man eater. Think of them like gorilla gargoyles. 
Uh, they're very, very angry, uh, but they tend to have the same kind of buggy AI that the gargoyles have. So it's, it's important that you have a bow here. I mean, if you've been following along, you know, we, we are very big fans of our bow. Uh, but every now and again, they'll get bugged up in the air, and you might just have to use your bow to, to finish them off. So important to have some arrows. Um, there is a... You fight them on a bridge to start. I would not suggest fighting them on the bridge. I feel like that's a very bad idea. Um, we're actually going to pull out my... Little DBS, we'll try it out. Um, what do I get more defense out of? Oh, your, your gloves, you ate nothing. Why do I have official gloves still? If you want, I can. Um, instead, I would suggest running past them, and there's kind of a center circular platform. I would still, I think you should fight them on that. That's just a little bit safer. Um, and this is actually, oh, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, let's see, beyond that, you can, uh, they have an AOE thing, kind of like a sonic wave sound blast, and they have a charge. The charge can knock you off and gravity kill you, which is why you want to get uh, over to that center platform and basically just play it safe and hit them from behind. Um, beyond that, you can cut the snake tail off of them, and uh, that's about it. So let's talk about Curse Weapon and circular platform i would say why do i have official stuff still if you want i can um instead i would suggest running past them and there's kind of a center circular platform i would still i think you should fight them on that that's just a little bit safer um and this is actually oh well, i'll talk about that in a second um let's see beyond that you can uh they have an aoe thing kind of like a sonic wave sound blast and they have a charge the charge can knock you off and gravity kill you, which is why you want to get uh, over to that center platform and basically just play it safe and hit him from behind. Um, beyond that, you can cut the snake tail off of them, and uh, that's about it. So let's talk about Curse Weapon and Dragon Bone Smasher and why we wanted the Talisman of the Beasts. Now, the Talisman of the Beasts is unique in that even though we don't meet the magic or the faith requirements for it, we are still able to cast spells with it. And this is what is known as a cracked Talisman of the Beasts. It's not going to uh, change anything, really. But especially with Cursed Weapon, Cursed Weapon typically drains 1% of your health per second. But with a cracked Talisman of Beasts, it will instead only drain 1 health per second. So that drains 1 HP per second. The shield heals for 2 HP per second. So basically, we get all the benefits of Cursed Weapon without any of the drawback of it. Uh, which is really, really cool. So anyway, put that on whatever weapon you're using, pop that out, and let's go in and smash ourselves a man-eater. So I'm just going to run right past them here. It's completely fine. And this is where we want to fight, right up here. It might take a second. As he lands, we'll, we'll give him a good smash. Dragon Bone Smash and just chunks. It's not the most annoying part of the fight, it's just waiting for them to land. One should. Really, really cool. So, anyway, put that on whatever weapon you're using, pop that out. And let's go in and smash ourselves a man-eater. So I'm just going to run right past them here. It's completely fine. And this is where we want to fight, right up here. It might take a second. As he lands, we'll, we'll give him a good smash. Some dragon bone smash and just chunks. It's not the most annoying part of the fight, it's just waiting for them to land. This is why I said bring a bow, because they might they might do this bullshit. Ideally you want to kill the first one before the second one shows up.
Maybe to do some grass. Hit you. You're gonna have a bad time if you do. You can see how we're able to just kind of use this big uh, fire vizier to just kind of hang out. Oh, away he goes again. All right, uh, so with them dead, there is two loots that we can get. One right over here. Be very careful getting these. It would be uh, very sad for you to die after coming all this way. Uh, so let's see, we got that wound sword, and there should be some grass up ahead. Uh, now, as for the boss soul, uh, there's no spells or anything you need that come from it, but you can use it to make a weapon. Honestly, the weapon's not good. Um, it's unique in the sense that it'll let you... Um, I'm trying to say warp out of here real fast, too. You don't want to risk... This is a very, very uh, popular invasion hotspot, so warp out. Um, but the weapon is like a small dagger type thing that steals 20 souls per hit on a target. But in the grand scheme of things, 20 souls per hit really isn't a lot. Uh, and on top of that, the weapon's actually, like, really dookie. So I would recommend just gobbling this bitch down. It's worth almost 20,000 souls uh, on its own. We're going to level up, obviously get rid of our humanity. And then in the next episode, we are going to knock out the boss here. And we are going to do the tendency events in this area. So stay tuned, and I will catch you all soon enough with more. What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back, and I hope you're ready, because we're getting some PvP action in this episode. So, uh, spend your souls. I spend them in Vitality, still working that towards 30, and we're on over to the Ivory Tower. Uh, this upcoming boss will typically summon a player in to fight you, even if you're, um, even if you don't have, uh, even if you're not in body form, regardless of if you're in body form or not. Uh, if a player is invading in this area, there's a chance that player could invade and fight you. Now, there's uh, an advantage and a disadvantage here. The first thing I want to talk about is if you really, really don't want to do PvP at all, if you just hate it, you don't want to deal with it, maybe you're struggling, um, just go go to offline mode. Not in uh, right here, network. You'd have to go back to the title menu, but launch date, go offline, and then you'll fight a NPC instead. And the NPC is quite, honestly, is a pushover. However... Keep in mind that not only are we manipulating world tendency, but we're also manipulating character tendency. And when you kill an invader, your character tendency goes up quite a bit. And because we can do it in soul form, we have the potential to kill an invader with zero risk of our character tendency going down. So if you're comfortable fighting another player, go for it. I would actually suggest you go for the player fight just because it's, you know, it's like a rite of passage in Demon Souls. One of the best parts about uh, Demon Souls, in my opinion, is this fight. Because you never know what you're going to get. It could be a new player that's just learning the game. It could be someone that's hyper trial. A little bit. Oh no, is it trying? What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. And it's time to knock out the rest of World 4. So... Um, before you do this, if you have them in the storage, soul remains can be pretty helpful here, uh, but you're going to want to have that, and then you're going to want to have your bow ready. We're going to be sniping quite a few reapers this time around. 
But as always, make sure you are in soul form. Don't want to risk influencing your world tendency. Uh, but right over here, we have a stone of imperial eyes. And then around on the other side, right here, we have a storied warrior soul. Uh, now, as for this area in particular, I would suggest swapping out your cling ring for the thief ring. Thief ring is going to be very, very helpful in this area. Uh, this part is not as important, but especially once we start really dealing with those rays, it's going to be useful to have that. So go on over here. We'll pick up this if you haven't already. Oh. And then we'll stop at him, and we're going to load up on arrows. Probably don't need that many. Uh, let's go 100 just to be safe. Uh, light arrows and uh, regular arrows, if you're curious here, because they have the, you know, this one is obviously five times the same cost. Uh, the basic thing is light arrows have a better distance modifier. So with bows, the farther an arrow is shot, uh, the lower the damage goes. With the light arrows, that is not as much of the case. So we're going to kill that first creeper. We've been killing him plenty up until now. Over here, we have some poison kunai. going over there in just a second but for now you can drop down if you want or you can run down it doesn't matter i'm just showing this path so that uh, you know exactly how to get out of this place so go down the tunnel yeah the warrior soul the reaper probably had something on him so we'll pick that up so more goodies over here now earlier when we were at this zone uh, farming we accidentally hit this but this plate right here is what's going to open that door you see in the back so as soon as you step on the plate the door will open uh, let's see full moon grass behind him item by the stairs moon stain yeah moon shade stone in the puddle okay um hidden path for soul and stone up top by the trap all right we'll do that real fast this way grab the warrior soul and then up top, this is going to be a trap. Just hit it. Go back away. There we go. Now we're going to go through the hidden wall here. Now I've covered this in a previous episode, but this skeleton, uh, not only is he very deadly, but he's actually uh, what you want to farm if you're doing a dex build. So uh, if you're doing a dexterity-based build, you want to get your world tendency to be pure black. And then you want to farm this guy over and over and over again. And this is going to be the best bet for getting the pure blink stone, which is the final upgrade material uh, for your dexterity based weapons. This guy obviously hits very hard. Uh, but the reason I say pure black, well, let's see, is on pure black, the loot chance is increased. So you can also drop other stuff. You can drop the chunks, you can drop the regular pieces. Go on and pick up the story warrior soul. We're going to head on this way for a lizard. We're going anywhere. Uh, so right here, this is actually where the primeval demon is going to show up when we're on pure black. And then if we go up a little bit more, get access to the white bow. Uh, white bow actually just a really really strong bow if you're not using the lava bow the white bow is my next recommendation just to take a look at that you can see 24 dexterity on this uh, very very strong extremely long range basically your go-to uh, if, if you're working with dexterity you would use like the sticky compound longbow and then you would uh, swap to that once you obtain it and level it up very potent for bow builds uh, so let's see, next we're going to loop around and we'll get kicked into the pit. Right over here, you'll see Patch is waiting, you can talk to him. Um, now remember, he would have been in World 2, but since we came here and farmed the Reaper, he skipped straight over to here, which is why that bear bug was never in the, the tunnel area. Uh, so approach this, Patches will kick you down into the pit. Uh, once we're down, this is St. Urbane. We don't need to worry about talking to him just yet. Um... Which, on the note of St. Urbane, so approach this, Patches will kick you down into the pit. Uh, once we're down, this is St. Urbane. We don't need to worry about talking to him just yet. Um, which, on the note of St. Urbane, before we rescue him, and unless you're doing a faith build, uh, this doesn't matter, 
but if your faith, I believe it is 20, it's either 20 or 30, but if your faith's high enough, you can get a, a pure faint stone from talking to a lady that just keeps praying and saying Mbasso back in the Nexus. Uh, you basically talk to her, she gives that stuff to you. And I, I believe it might be universal, but some people are saying it's before you free your vein. Either way, pure faint stones aren't nearly as rare as some other faint stones, so it's not really a major concern. And even then, it's only a concern if you were running a faith build. So we gotta... Kill this guy. Now, there's actually an interesting thing about this enemy. Um, he is always going to drop a stone of imperial eyes, and he will respawn if Saint Urbane is dead. So there, there is a trophy for rescuing Urbane, but if you aren't caring about miracles at all, you don't need any of the boss miracles, you can kill him here, and then you can consistently farm that red phantom for eyes. Uh, there are going to be areas later where we'll be able to farm so it's not like this is the only way to get eyes, but if you're someone that's not interested in miracles, I figured I would mention it. So anyway, after you have killed the guy, talk to him. Uh, this item we can only grab on pure white world tendency, and this is the magic sword Makoto. Want to pop this open though? Got some goodies we'll grab in this little hallway. then when we get up top, we'll talk to Patches and he'll give us a ring. There's our cash resistance ring. And at this point, we're ready to continue on for the next half of this area. And so we are, there should be some half moon grass over on the, or half moon grass on the left. So this is it right here. Hang on a second here. Proceed outside for half moon grass on left warrior. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. Gotta trust in the notes. Half moon grass on left warrior soul up ahead. Uh, and this is where it gets important to use our thief ring because we have all of the little sky rays here. It can be pretty annoying. Uh, so what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna shoot this one. It's gonna kill itself. We're going to <laughs> AI in this game. Uh, this one will just snipe the regular skelly. And then the next one we'll just walk up and beat down. Now you don't have to snipe, but it just makes things significantly easier. Uh, now we have the big boys. There's actually two of them, so I'm going to hit the one to start luring him over this way. Just trying to get him to, to come over here without his buddy. There's the second one. Snipe the three, snipe the score, kill the sword, suddenly grab the soul. Okay. After the fog, there should be a moonstone shaved soul.
Yeah, that shit was gonna happen. Once you know the positions of the Reapers, uh, this area becomes significantly easier. Because otherwise you're like making your way down here and you have all those guys trying to hit you and kill you. Uh, there should be one that'll pop up behind us when we grab this. Because yeah, we can hear him, but he's not popping up. Oh, he's going to take his sweet time and not pop up. There he is. Really taking his sweet time, aren't you? Kill him. And I'm down here. And we're going to get ambushed again by them. More are going to pop up when we grab this, but we'll be able. It's the same as the other ones we just killed, so. All right. Uh, let's see. Follow the path for a dagger. I continue down. Wait, did I pick up the dagger? Okay, um, after, let me go through the fog. Okay. Um, after the fog, I'll move this around. And this one's a little bit trickier because we can't snipe the Reaper that's going to be, not the Reaper. Yeah, we can't snipe the Reaper, so we have to deal with a couple of these guys just that, right? So kill that one. Once you cross this, turn around. Kill that one. There's one that you can see up ahead. Go ahead and snipe him. And right next to him is actually where the Reaper's at. Kill him. And we're going to walk and just knock that Reaper out. With that, you are Reaper free. No more Reapers to worry about. No more ghosts to worry about. Uh, let's see. Did that snap the third Reaper follow the path for some loot and the glow cave. Uh, now, this glow cave is actually a really, really nice place to farm the sticky white slime. Uh, obviously, you would want to farm it from the Arkstone of the next boss. Uh, but it is it is excellent. I cannot stress that enough. These guys, they just drop the, the slime. So these, when you get close to them, they explode. <laughs> As you can see, the damage is, is pretty beefy. It's not like uh, end of the world damage, but it's it's significant. So we're going to go ahead and talk to our big boy here. Um, uh, let's see. We want to do sticky white slime on the right first. Donk. The rolling attack, that's the wise sweep. It is. I think the running attack two-handed might be a wise sweep as well. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Uh, so kill those three, then go up. Then we're going to grab this. And we're going to go back down. You can also get sucker stone shards if you're looking for those, which I am going to uh, make some space here. Hang on to that. Dagger. And wait. Okay. Uh, let's see. Slab up for slime, left for chunk near a slug. Arcway for five more slugs. Um, chunks over here. Yeah. I'm gonna go through this for a bunch of slugs. out for here is going to be these little white balls uh, so next we're going to take this path over here this is the arc where we came through so killing the slugs taking the far right path Got this let me have more slugs around the corner Ronin ring which we 
reduces weapon uh, durability loss and hiltless, which is uh, arguably the strongest katana in the game. If you have been watching the prep streams, that's the katana that I'm always invading people with. two let's see uh two slugs then arc way to head back up okay so we killed those let me go through this arc way and now we're right back out into the area where we initially uh killed all the the five slugs so let's look through here and then we'll go back up top uh, now from up here you can like really take a look down and see make sure there wasn't anything that you missed uh over here there's a small area that we haven't done the only area you can't connect to from all the tunnels. And this one's a little bit trickier because we can't snipe the Reaper that's going to be... Or not the Reaper. Yeah, we can't snipe the Reaper. So we have to deal... So anyway, after you have killed the guy, talk to him. Uh, this item we can only grab on pure White World Tendency. And this is the Magic Sword Makoto. Want to pop this open, though? Yeah, so these will grab in this little hallway. And then when we get up top, we'll talk to Patches and we'll give us a ring. There's our gas resistance ring. And at this point, we're ready to continue on for the next half of this area. And so we are, there should be some half moon grass over on the, or half moon grass on the left. So this is it right here. Hang on a second here. Proceed outside for half moon grass on left warrior. Ah, oh, there it is. Gotta trust in the notes. Half moon grass on left warrior soul up ahead. Uh, and this is where it gets important to use our thief ring because we have all of the little sky rays here. They can be pretty annoying. Uh, so what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna shoot this one. It's gonna kill itself. We're going to <laughs> AI in this game. Uh, this one will just snipe. A regular skelly. And then the next one we'll just walk up and beat down. Now you don't have to snipe, but it just makes things significantly easier. Uh, now we have the big boys. There's actually two of them, so I'm going to hit the one to start luring him over this way. Just trying to get him to, to come over here without his buddy. the second one grab this uh, snipe the three snipe the score kill the sword Sally grab the soul okay after the fog Head. Hang on a second here. Proceed outside for half moon as we have all of the little sky rays here. They can be pretty annoying. Uh, so what we're going to do right here is we're going to shoot this one. It's going to kill itself. We're going to <laughs> AI in this game. Uh, this one will just snipe a regular skelly. And then the next one will just walk up and beat down. You don't have to snipe, but it just makes things significantly easier. Uh, now we have the big boys. There's actually two of them, so I'm going to hit the one to start luring him over this way. Just trying to get him to, to come over here without his buddy. There's the second one. Snipe the three, snipe the score, kill the sword, sell the grab the soul. Okay. After the fog, there should be a moonstone shaped soul. And now we need to uh, mess with another reaper. So this is where our, our soul remains come in. Throw 
the soul remains. You may get distracted by that, but you want to kill just this one. You can see he was walking forward, and he just walks over to it like a puppy. Um, and right around where we killed him, actually, you want to look, and you can see the Reaper just between these two pillars here. We're going to go ahead and snipe him. from this area uh, so now it's not nearly as stressful like once you know the positions of the reapers uh, this area becomes significantly easier because otherwise you're like making your way down here and you have all those guys trying to hit you and kill you uh, there should be one that'll pop up behind us when we grab this where's he at we can hear him but he's not popping up i hope he's gonna take a sweet time and not pop up there he is really taking a sweet time aren't you? Kill him. Head on down here. And we're gonna get ambushed again by them. More are gonna pop up when we really is stressful. Right around where we another reaper. So this shade soul. And now we need to uh, mess with another reaper. So this is where our, our soul remains come in. The soul remains. You may get distracted by that, but you want to kill just this one. You can see he was walking forward. He just walks over to it like a puppy. Um, and right around where we killed. You want to look, and you can see the Reaper just between these two pillars here. We're going to go ahead. Snipe him. So similar to above, that's going to do. shades from this area uh, so now it's not nearly as stressful like once you know the positions of the reapers uh, this area becomes significantly easier because otherwise you're like making your way down here and you have all those guys trying to hit you and kill you uh, there should be one that'll pop up behind us when we grab this where's he at we can hear him but he's not popping up i hope he's going to take a sweet time and not pop up there he is really taking a sweet time Head on down here. 
and we're going to get ambushed again by them. More are going to pop up when we grab this, but we'll be able. It's the same as the other ones we just killed. So. this turn around kill that one there's one that you can see up ahead go ahead and snipe him and right next to him is actually where the reaper's at kill him and we're gonna walk and just knock that reaper out i'm at that Sucker 
stone shards if you're looking for those which I am going to uh, make some space here hang on to that dagger oh, wait okay uh, let's see Slime, left for slime, left for chunk near a slug. Arc wave for five more slugs. Um, chunks over here. I'm gonna go through this for a bunch of slugs. out for here is going to be these little white balls uh, so next we're going to take this path over here this is the arc where we came through so killing the slugs taking the far right path Grab this and then we have more slugs around the corner ronin ring which reduces weapon uh, durability loss and hiltless which is uh, arguably the strongest katana in the game. If you have been watching the prep streams, that's the katana that I'm always invading people with. These two. Let's see. Uh, two slugs, then arc way to head back up. Okay, so we killed those. We go through this arc way. And now we're right back out into the area where we initially... Uh, so you killed all the, the five slugs. So let's look through here, and then we'll go back up top. Uh, now from up here, you can, like, really take a look down and see, make sure there wasn't anything that you missed. Uh, over here, there's a small area that we haven't done. The only area you can't connect to from all the tunnels. with that we have finished this area so you can always come back here and uh, farm those slugs if you want but next up we have the boss uh, so similarly to going through this area this boss you also want to fight with the thief ring on uh, this is the end of and beat him until he's dead have a hard choice to use it to first second chip. 
Exactly, uh, hard bosses. Even get to do a spell. Even get to do exactly the Nexus. So you know what? Let's use it. Let's use it real fast. Just to, the Nexus. Uh, we will. Well, actually, you know what? Let's use it. Let's use it real fast. Just to case this. So we go on over here. Actually, you know what? I am still cracked, so I would need to get to 18 faith to be able to use this properly, but that's okay. Uh, so go to Learn Miracle and Second Chance is here. So I want to pick that bad boy up. And we're going to remove Evacuate and put on Second Chance. And then we're going to go over here. You need to go to Storage. And use up all of these. Uh, now, it's important to mention that you don't need to use the Talisman of Beasts to... Actually, you know what? No, I don't need the Talisman of Beasts. I can use a Cracked with this spell, I believe, because it's not a scaling spell. Yes, I can. Okay, well, we don't even need to worry about Faith then. That's right. So, now I have a little Aura. If I die, I come back. Uh, but let's go ahead and spend these souls and level up. Uh, so with where we're at now... Uh, the most important thing, hands down, is going to be our endurance. We really want to get this up, uh, this build, and at an end game. Where we're at, give our faith to the second chance. Learn miracle and second chance is here. So we want to pick that bad boy up, and we're going to remove evacuate and put on second chance. And then we're going to go over here. You need to go to storage use up all of these uh, now it's important to mention that you don't need to use the talisman of beasts to actually you know what no I don't need the talisman of beasts I can use a cracked with this spell I believe because it's not a scaling spell yes I can okay well we don't even need to worry about faith then that's right so, now I have a little aura if I die I come back uh, but let's go ahead and spend these souls and level up so with where we're at now, uh, the most important thing, hands down, is going to be our endurance. We really want to get this up, uh, this build, at, at an end game, just to set some perspective on where we're going forward from here. Um, our endurance, we want to get up to 40. Our vitality, we want to get up to 50. you can take strength all the way up to 66 and keep in mind when you're two-handing a weapon your strength will get a 1.5 modifier so putting your strength up to 66 means that when you're two-handing the dragon bone smasher it's the equivalent of having 99 strength uh, but anyway for now at least we want to start really ramping up our endurance here we uh, we want to get that up to 40 that's the in the dragon bone smasher it's the equivalent of having 99 strength uh, but anyway, for now, at least we want to start really ramping up our endurance here. We uh, we want to get that up to 40. That's the, the soft cap for the endurance. Uh, when I say soft cap, what I mean is that once we hit 40 on endurance, we start seeing much heavier diminishing returns from from the stat. So ideally, you, you don't want to go past 40. You certainly can, and you'll see some increases, but from 1 to 40 is going to be the majority of your stat increases. we are still suiciding to maintain uh, world tendency we don't want that affected and uh, now we have urbane here so we can learn uh, boss miracles from him and also patches is now here permanently as a merchant uh, he has quite a few things uh, this is going to be your main grass merchant so anytime you want grass this is where you're going to go from now on you're just going to come to per patches and you're going to buy grass um, he also sells Arcstone shards, which if you uh, if you need them, you can get them here. Uh, beyond that, the sticky white slime, we can buy that from him. It's five thousand a pop, so kind of expensive. Cat ring seems attractive, but we're actually going to be grabbing that in an upcoming zone, so don't worry about that for now. Um, what I would suggest is just check your inventory. If you need grass, pick up grass here. 
keep in mind, we can just go and we can uh, we can put on that ring from earlier, the Ring of Avarice, arm up the Reaper, that first Reaper, pop him, you'll get like 7,000 souls, and then you can come here and buy all the grass you need. So from this point on, healing is no longer a concern whatsoever. Uh, but we are going to be wrapping things up here in the next episode. We're going to head back to the Altar of Storms and take down the Archdemon of this area. And then we are going to do the uh, World Tendency events, both Pure White and Pure Black. So stay tuned for that, and I will catch you all soon enough as we continue. What is happening? You may get over here. We're bound over. Uh, now you're going to want to have the bar. What is happening? You and strength regenerators ring is actually really. Re they can roll, and what we can't. Shaman's not a jump. Stop working. Regenerators ring is and stop. What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. So before we go into this next zone, if you've been following along, you should have access to the Sodden Ring. As a reminder, we got this on pure black world tendency in 3-2, uh, basically when we took the cage down into the area and picked on up. And we're going to want this for the next zone, so put that up. Uh, in addition to that, we are going to want to have access to the Noble's Lotus to counteract poison. Add up. Uh, before we go, What is happening, y'all? Well, gargoyles earlier, but it's just, it's a boss. It's a weapon the next boss uses, and it looks cool. All right, so now we're all the way back up. Top of this red knight, we did that. Uh, we're going to continue around for grass and two baddies. So there's uh, some stuff over that way. Ignore that stuff for now. Grab this grass. As you can see, like two archers there. We're going to go there, but we're going to do that a little bit later. First, we want to get the shortcut unlocked. So go this way instead. Oh my goodness. I don't mean to use that, but it's okay. As being very, very resilient. chunk of souls and what path is basically cleared outside of a few uh earth they're not even gonna I'll try my my guy here see how it feels why not let's just but ain't nobody got why not let's just kill 
see how it feels. So because we freed him from the cage, Yori's going to come out, and the penetrator is basically just going to focus him. So all you'll have to do is just stay behind him. He's very on the line. He has a boner for Bjork. Uh, watch out for that stab move, obviously. That's probably one of the few things you need to look out for. If he stabs Bjork with it, you can actually attack him during that. I need to really use that effectively yet. I'm gonna wait. I'll look at Bjor. I'm gonna go back on back. Yeah, as long as you have Bjor, this fight is, is really, really easy. There's really not much to it. You just eat him down and then you're on your way. Alright, go ahead and talk to him. He looks like Tom Seller. Anyway, so he's going to go take a nap. We are going to warp on out of here and wrap this episode up. So there is, uh, we're actually going to do some of the world tendency stuff uh, here a little bit later. I kind of want to put things towards black, but uh, a little bit risky to do it just yet. Uh, so we're going to wrap this episode up. Uh, the next episode, we're probably going to continue on and do 3-2, uh, 3-3. Three, three, three. So stay tuned, and I will catch you all soon enough with that.
that on whatever weapon you're using pop that out 
And let's go in and smash ourselves a man-eater. So I'm just going to run right past them here. It's completely fine. And this is where we want to fight, right up here. Might take a second once he lands, but we'll give him a good time. Dragon Bone Smasher just chunks. It's not the most annoying part of the fight, it's just waiting for them to land. This is why I said bring a bow, because they might they might do this bullshit. Ideally you want to kill the first one before the second one shows up. One dead. Um, I need to do some grass. Don't let that charge hit you. They're gonna have a bad time if you do. See how we're able to just kind of use this big uh, fire vizier to just kind of hang out. Oh, away he goes again. So with them dead, there is two loots that we can get. One right over here. Be very careful getting these. It would be uh, very sad for you to die after coming all this way. Uh, so let's see. We got that wound sword, and there should be some grass up ahead. Uh, now, as for the boss soul, uh, there's no spells or anything you need that come from it. But you can use it to make a weapon. Honestly, the weapon's not good. Um, it's unique in the sense that it'll let you... Um, which honestly, warp out of here real fast, too. You don't want to risk... This is a very, very uh, popular invasion hotspot, so warp out. Um, but the weapon is like a small dagger type thing that steals 20 souls per hit on a target. But in the grand scheme of things, 20 souls per hit really isn't a lot. Uh, and on top of that, the weapon's actually, like, really dookie. So I would recommend just gobbling this bitch down. It's worth almost 20,000 souls uh, on its own. So we're going to level up, obviously get rid of our humanity. And then in the next episode, we are going to knock out the boss here. And we are going to do the tendency events in this area. So stay tuned, and I will catch you all soon enough with more. I want some of the stuff I'm going to want on me. 
me. Um, oh, send you to storage and you to storage. There's the gold mask. There's the ring of avarice. So the, uh, I don't remember the exact total. I think it might be a 20% increase to your soul count. But regardless, any time that you're doing the Reaper farm that we talked about, um, put on the Ring of Avarice. It is, I mean, it's a big increase. I remember it's a big increase. You know what, why not? Let's pop a Google it real fast. 20% uh, indeed, right on the marker. Uh, and that's actually the same exact ring that you can buy from the lady that cost the 50,000 souls. Uh, got it for free, so saving you money. Day by day. Inside of it. Cry fist, that's, that's wrong. That is wrong and depraved. Anyway, that's all that good stuff required. Just head on up, and we're up and out. more enemy to kill and then we are on to the boss by kill I mean snipe from the safety far away all right so you'll notice the tendrils are now gone before we climb up the giant staircase Run back here and grab this little guy. Uh, now, about halfway up the staircase is going to be another mine player, so just get your bow ready. And you can let's see. There he is. So, we're going to run until we're within a decent range of him. And then we're going to use these little chain pillars to block his magic and snipe him. That's probably a good distance. And keep in mind, we got the bow, and the bow is going to hit stun him anyway. Just in case he gets a cast off, you can see it hits those pillars. And down he goes. Top, and then there's two more goodies we can grab. One will be back this way to the left. One will be back the opposite direction, right past the fog wall. Um, seems like a good time to discuss the boss. So the man-eaters are weak to fire. Um, it is a two-boss fight, so the idea is you start fighting one man-eater. Think of them like gorilla gargoyles. Uh, they're very, very angry, uh, but they tend to have the same kind of buggy AI that the gargoyles have. So it's, it's important that you have a bow here. I mean, if you've been following along, you know, we've, we're very big fans of our bow uh, but every now and again they'll get bugged up in the air and you might just have to use your bow to, to finish them off so important to have some arrows um there is a you fight them on a bridge to start i would not suggest fighting them on the bridge i feel like that's a very bad idea um, we're actually gonna i'm gonna pull out my little dbs and try it out um what do we get more defense out of Oh, your, your gloves? You ate nothing. Why don't I have official gloves still? If you are, I can't. Um, instead, I would suggest running past them, and there's kind of a central circular platform. I would stow. I think you should fight them on that. That's just a little bit safer. Um, this is actually... Oh, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, let's see. Beyond that, you can... Uh, they have an AoE thing, kind of like a sonic wave sound blast, and they have a charge. The charge can knock you off gravity kill you which is why you want to get um, over to that center platform and basically just play it safe and hit him from behind um beyond that you can cut the snake tail off of them and uh that's about it so let's talk about cursed weapon and dragon bone smasher and why we want to be talisman of the beast now the talisman of the beast is unique in that even though we don't meet the 
magic or the faith requirements for it, we are still able to cast spells with it. And this is what is known as a cracked talisman of the beast. It's not going to uh, change anything really. But especially with cursed weapon, cursed weapon typically drains 1% of your health per second. With a cracked talisman, at least, instead only drain 1 health per second. So that drains 1 HP per second. The shield heals for 2 HP per second. So basically, we get all the benefits of cursed weapon without any of the drawback of it, uh, which is really, really cool. So anyway, put that on whatever weapon you're using, pop that out, and let's go in and smash ourselves a man-eater. So I'm just going to run right past them here. It's completely fine. And this is where we want to fight, right up here. Might take a second as he lands, we'll give him a good smash. Dragon Bone Smash just chunks. It's not the most annoying part of the fight, is waiting for them to land. This is why I said bring a bow, because they might they might do this bullshit. Ideally you wanna kill the first one before the second one shows up.
it to make a weapon honestly the weapon's not good um, it's unique in the sense that it'll let you um, which honestly warp out of here real fast too you don't want to risk this is a very very uh, popular invasion hotspot so warp out um, but the weapon is like a small dagger type thing that steals 20 souls per hit on a target but in the grand scheme of things 20 souls per hit really isn't a lot uh, and on top of that the weapon's actually like really dookie. So I would recommend just gobbling the bitch down. It's worth almost 20,000 souls. Yeah. What did that warp up? Um, and there's a chance that player could invade and fight you. Now there's uh, an advantage and a disadvantage here. The first thing I want to talk about is if you really, really go off, the, you go for the player because you never know what this thing is. My disgusting and the player, it was. Go offline, and then you'll fight a NP. Have so we're getting some PVP action this episode. So uh, spend your souls. I spend them in vitality, still working that towards thirty. And warp on over to the ivory tower. Now, uh, this upcoming boss will typically summon a player in to fight you, even if you're, um, even if you don't have, uh, even if you're not in body form. Regardless of if you're in body form or not. Uh, if a player is invading in this area, there's a chance that player could invade and fight you. Now, there's uh, an advantage and a disadvantage here. The first thing I want to talk about is if you really, really don't want to do PvP at all, if you just hate it, you don't want to deal with it, maybe you're struggling, um, just go go to offline mode. Not in uh, right here, network. You'd have to go back to the title menu, but launch date, go offline, and then you'll fight a NPC instead. And the NPC is quite, honestly, he's a pushover. However... Keep in mind that not only are we manipulating world tendency, but we're also manipulating character tendency. And when you kill an invader, you're... Character tendency goes up quite a bit. And because we can do it in soul form, we have the potential to kill an invader with zero risk of our character tendency going down. So if you're comfortable fighting another player, go for it. I would actually suggest you go for the player fight just because it's, you know... It's like a rite of passage in Demon's Souls. One of the best parts about uh, Demon's Souls, in my opinion, is this fight. Because you never know what you go for the player form. We have the potential to kill an invader with zero risk of our character tendency going down. So if you're comfortable fighting another player, go for it. I would actually suggest you go for the player fight just form. We have the potential to kill an invader. Your character tendency goes up. suggest you go for the player fight just because it's you know it, it's like a rite of passage in demon souls one of the best parts about uh demon souls in my opinion is this fight because you never know what you're going to get it could be a new player that's just learning the game it could be someone that's hyper try hard uh, anyway we got four little centipede men and then after them we're going to have some more black phantom mind players this is our fourth one Roll ahead a little bit. Anyway, point is there's a black phantom coming. Uh, the mind flayer again. So just creep nice and slow. Where are you at, little fucker? Oh, we are getting a player. Excellent. So unfortunately, unless the player also skips this cutscene, we have to watch it. To be honest, I'm not sure how I'll do against a player with this setup. Um, if I get a hit on them, they're dead. But the thing is, my weapon takes so long to swing, I might want to use the axe instead. He 
even though uh, Strength Build does Oonga Boonga most of the game. A little bit of a mixed bag in PvP, because it really depends whether or not you can get your attack out in time. And, uh, and the, the uh, Primal series, we're doing a dexterity build, and it's disgusting. And basically, two shot players in this encounter will stop swinging the weapon as fast as I swing the axe on this character. So, you can imagine how that goes. Uh, now, the player boss, it's its literally a player. It'll get uh, little homing soleros, the ones that hover up on their shoulders. It gets like 2 at 50%, and I think 3 or 4 as it gets lower. The Gronk Party Bus. Here's our first phantom. Let's see. The arrow to the knee. Blizzard up here, here just to make. Oh my good. There we go. Alrighty. Well, here goes nothing. Get my heart pounding for some PvP. Oh, a Moonlight Greatsword. And a little bit laggy. Oh boy, a lot of bit laggy, okay. Nope, we're dead. That's okay. I can't do anything about a player that's sliding and lagging, unfortunately. But like I said, one of the great advantages of this fight is uh, we are at no risk. So we can just uh, go in and die and it doesn't matter. Which I'll probably just use my axe just to make things easy. Uh, the weapon I had, it's like I said, kind of a bit slow for PvP. I chunked most of his damage in a single hit, but... No, you know what? I'm gonna use Primer Bone Smasher. It may be a PvE weapon. Damn it, I'm gonna make it work. Actually, if that cutscene doesn't play, we uh, might just be playing the regular NPC. Oh, goodness. Man, those guys hurt. a player this time. Oh no, is it trying? I think a player is trying to invade. Yeah, okay. We're gonna we're gonna make it happen one way or another. I want it. I want the smash. Oh no, this is the end version. So the NPC, how, how it has just two fist weapons, that's how you know. Which is unfortunate. I don't really like to do that to a player, but... salty too because we we did so much damage to that guy too we like one hit we were able to 
chunk of 90% of the sand. Humanity, you need to uh, die to get the world of black. It's going to do that over and over again. Last episode, I mentioned this, and now this little bridge here we're able to go up to the top and up top we can grab this so i'd suggest you just hit evacuate here to save yourself some time and up top we can grab this we're go up to the top Top, we can grab this. So I'd suggest you just hit evacuate here to save yourself some time. Okay. How many souls are we off, by the way? 25? Up that and uh, get a level real fast. And since we're going into... Uh, Stuff that I don't need. 
screen, set the storage, set the storage. Hey, 30 vitality. Okay. So now we're hopping over to uh, prison, 3-1, and we're going to go free ride down and grab a bunch of goodies. So from the prison of hope, um, let's see, backwards to start, up through front door, past double player, down all the way to 4-2. So, up, up, this way. Battle axe. I don't know if a battle axe would have stuck up against uh, a Moonlight Greatsword. It would have been a close fight. But damn, I hate, I hate losing fights. But at the same time, I kind of went into that um, knowing that that was probably going to happen. Kill them. And we're going to run all the way this way. Uh, and in the episode where we came here, I actually forgot about this room. This is the Iron Maiden room. There's a loot in here, a loot in there. Last episode, I mentioned this, but we can now cross this little bridge here. mention this but we can now cross this little bridge here we're able to go up to the top and up top we can grab this so i'd suggest you just hit evacuate here to save yourself some time souls are we off by the way 25 up that and uh, get a level real fast Opening, so from the prison of hope um let's see backwards to start up through front door past double player down all the way to 14. All the way this way uh, and in the episode where we came here I actually forgot about this room this is the Iron Maiden room there's a loot in here a loot in
ring trophy is located in that room. I've left it has a noble's lotus, but you'll want to come in here. Uh, one of the rings that you'll need for the all ring trophy is located in that room. I've left a pinned comment on that episode, but I still felt inclined to mention it while we were passing by it now. So then we just head down this and then we go down and across and down again, and we should be at Rydell's cell. Let him out. I want to talk to him. At the dull rat spring. Um, this path is now open since it's pure white world tendency. We're just going to run to the end real fast. And we're going to open up all of these uh, cages that have loots. Okay, this one was nothing. This one was loot. And of Stage gear. None of them have like hidden boots. They're all they're all very plainly in the uh, open. So venerable stage gear. It's a dud. Three corner hat. Very flashy for our mages. so you know don't even worry just leave them um instead we need to go on over to another area now you well i should say i shouldn't say leave him it's important that you do not kill right out uh if you kill him you'll mess up a quest here so we need to go as long as he's alive to another area that's open so we're going to go down again and we're going to run past the uh, big death ball that's down here ignore the death ball the door now while we're over here i mean the lizard's there you might as well unless you got a suicide he's gonna reach the clip oh the quick little bugger that's all right anyway with rydell alive this will open up we can finally access this part of the area uh, there are three players here something to keep in mind much flare city Now, the 
this area is nice and safe. Uh, so second to last cage. And we'll get a key. Legendary hero soul. Uh, I'm finally at. I'm gonna run back, mess up a quest here. So we need to go. Now Rydell's just gonna chill here, so you know, don't even worry, just leave him. Um, instead, we need to go on over to another area. Now, do oh, well, I should say, I shouldn't just say leave him. It's important that you do not kill Rydell. Uh, if you kill him, you'll mess up a quest here. So we need to go, as long as he's alive, to another area that's open. So we're going to go down again, and we're going to run past the uh, big death ball that's down here. Ignore the death ball. We're going over to the door. Now while we're over here, I mean, the lizard's there, you might as well. Here, ignore the death ball. We're going over to the door. Now while we're over here, I mean, the lizard's there, you might as well. Oh, is he gonna suicide? Is he gonna reach the cliff? Oh, the quick little bugger. That's yeah, alright. Anyway, with Rydell alive, this will open up. Finally access this part of the area. Uh, there are three flavors here. Something to keep in mind. Very much Flare City. Wanna... Player number two. area is nice and safe. Uh, so second to last cage. Very much flip. We can finally access this part of the area. Anyway, with Rydell alive, this lizard's there, you might as well. Uh, is he going to suicide? He's going to reach over to the door. And we're going to run past the uh, big death ball that's down here. Ignore the death ball. to the door. Now while we're over here, I mean, the lizard's there, you might as well. Oh, is he gonna suicide? Is he gonna reach the cliff? Oh, the quick little bugger. Rydell alive, this will open up. city. Now 
this area is nice and safe. Uh, so second to last cage. And we'll get a key. Legendary hero soul. Uh, we got nothing in this one. But now we're just going to go and open up any cage that we see goodies in. And at this point, you should have all the keys. You should be able to open uh, every single cell that's in this place. I don't even bother writing down all the loot, so as soon as a bunch of goodies we can get. Dead end. Uh, the rogue set parrying dagger. Excellent fashion. Fresh spice. So with that done, go ahead and back to the Nexus again. And now we need to push this world all the way to pure black world tendency. So thankfully we don't have a lot of souls, but I'm going to spend them and uh, pick up some arrows here. Nice and safe. Uh, so second to last cage. All right, now this area is nice. All right, now this area is nice and safe. Uh, so second to last cage. And we'll get a key. Legendary hero soul. Uh, we got nothing in this one. But now we're just going to go and open up any cage that we see goodies in. And at this point, you should have all the keys. You should be able to open uh, every single cell that's in this place. I don't even bother writing down all the loot, so there's a bunch of goodies we can get. Dead end. Rogue set parrying dagger. Excellent fashion. Fresh spice. need to push this world all the way to pure black world tendency so thankfully we don't have a lot of souls but we'll spend them and uh, some arrows here oh i'm a inventory capacity Pity. but anyway so for our suicides here i would suggest you go to the ivory 
tower here. Uh, it's going to be really easy to just eat ourselves off cliffs here. So. on your stones. One. Oh. One of the easiest ways to do this, if you really don't care about your character tendency, is to just keep it 